Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing directory enumeration. I'm going to be using a tool called GoBuster and I'm going to be showing you a few techniques so that you can use it in your CTF world, maybe in your bug bounty type efforts. There's a lot of ways to do directory enumeration. Okay, there's there's a ton of ways. I'm going to be showing you some of the, the key ways that I use it in CTF and in bug bounty. Hopefully you find it useful. Before we get too crazy into enumeration and the technical side of things, though, I would like to explain to you kind of like, what is directory enumeration? So let's say that you've got just a generic website that you're trying to figure out what are all the directories and files that are on this website. What we do is we come up with a word list. And in this word list, you, you could have thousands of thousands of words. And so as we send a connection request to a website, we're going to attach a word from the list to the end of that URL that we're trying to target. And the goal of this is to see, does this connect? Is this an actual URL that we could actually connect to? And so you would go through and you'll find things that keep on not connecting until you get to that point where yes, we actually have something that connects where we didn't know that existed before, but now we know that in this particular case, website.com slash login is a legitimate path that we could follow. That's what directory enumeration is. That really is it. Why is this important for cyber stuff? How do you know where to find vulnerabilities in a website for a bug bounty? If you don't know where all the places exist on that website and you got to hunt down all of the different endpoints that we could access on that website. Let's go ahead and start with our, our first technique of using GoBuster. I've actually got two machines on this isolated network and I don't know what their IP address is because they're CTF machines that I downloaded from Vulnhub. doesn't really matter what the machine is because I'm confident they've got a web server running on it. Let's first go ahead and find these machines. This is my router here. So we know that 2.36 and 2.37, those are in fact our IP addresses that we're going to target. Now going into this, I don't know anything about these machines and that's fine. That's where the fun of Capture the Flag uh, machines is. Do a quick Nmap scan of it. Yeah, there you go. So now I know that it's got port 80. It's got a web server running. And we can see that it's got hypertext transfer protocol running. Beautiful. Let's begin enumerating this machine. As you get into your bug bounty type world, you're going to have some GoBuster commands that are kind of like your go-to. Now, I'm going to show you a very basic one. And then I'm going to show you my go-to. Here's a very basic one. All right. It might not look basic, but it is. So we've got GoBuster. We're going to call it. And then we've, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we can enumerate directories. That's where the DIR comes in. We've got a dash U, which is t saying the URL that's our target is going to be this. And then the W, dash W, is showing our word list. You can use whatever word list you want. In this particular case, I'm using the Durbuster directory medium. That's my, that's actually my favorite one. It's got a lot of good stuff in there, but you could use anything. You could use rock. You, you could use a word list that you made yourself. Why not? Who's stopping you? Nobody. Go Buster definitely, definitely requires that you have when it's specifically when you're using the dir here that you use the dash U and the dash W. Those are required. Okay. It wouldn't make any sense to do a, an enumeration against a directory if you have no word list, <laughs> right? That makes sense. Okay, let's modify our IP address here and then launch this thing. And we were doing 36. I've actually modified the screen a little bit. Same, same content here, but I want you to specifically see that we have a status 301. It's really important to pay attention to the statuses that we're getting back. So that HTTP response, what is it saying? Is it a 200? Did we get to the website? Is it a 301? Are we being pointed 
somewhere else? Are we being redirected to a different a different location? If you see a slash at the end like this, that means that you need to actually go another step further. I'm going to put in this, and at the end of my IP address here, I'm actually going to add the directory here that we we just discovered. Slash site. And then see what comes up from it. And look at how it's changed. So now we're, we're doing a directory enumeration with a with a modified URL. See, we added this site at the end. And now we've got images, CSS, and JavaScript. We're sort of like mapping it out. That's that's what enumeration is for. It's great. I will never run enumeration without this next feature turned on. And it's in fact looking for extensions. So helpful because there might be things in that 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 specific location that actually have HTML, TXT, PHP, or whatever you want. So now all you have to add is a dash X HTML, TXT, PHP. Let's go. Look at what new information we have. We know that inside of this folder of site, we have a index.html. So we know there's something, there's something extra there to go and check out. We don't have a TXT. We don't have a PHP. However, if we did have those files there, they would have shown up, which is, which is awesome, which can then further help us actually learn about our target to learn what is actually happening in the background of that machine. And then from there, pivot and change how we're going to modify our attack or our our bug bounty hunting for this particular instance. Another cool thing that we can do with GoBusters is that we can actually tell the web server that we are a different user agent. So what that means is that I can say, hey there, I'm a Pixel phone, let's enumerate. Hey there, I'm an Edge browser, let's enumerate, et cetera, et cetera. And there's, there's hundreds of these different uh, user agents that we can actually copy and sort of spoof. Let's go and find one. All I did was Google a list of user agents. And I've got one here. It's a Pixel 7. Sounds fun. Let's copy it. And let's go back to our Kali Linux and modify our, our GoBuster to now allow us to sort of spoof that. And it's pretty straightforward. I do it right after my dash U and the URL. And so we're going to do a dash A, quotation mark, and then we're going to insert that value that we just copied and close that quotation and then leave everything else the same. I'm still going to be looking for HTML, TXT, PHP, but all we are doing now is that when we send that request to the website, we are telling the host that we are Mozilla 5.0 and it's a, a Pixel 7 Pro. Beautiful. Let's send it. It's working. We're enumerating, which is great. I want to validate this with Wireshark. So we're going to open up Wireshark, make it a background process, start a general capture here on that interface that I want. Shrink that. And now we're going to go back and run our Mozilla string again. We should see stuff being captured inside of Wireshark here. Yes, we do. I'll let that go for a moment. It's doing its work. Kill the enumeration. Stop the capture. And now I want to go to the first packet. And we'll see, did, did Wireshark capture this spoofed user agent? Go to the beginning. And I'm going to right click here. And we're going to go to follow TCP stream. And wait for it to load. And right here at the top of the screen, we can see the user agent has been changed. So why would we do this? When we have different user agents, sometimes web developers will create their website and put res certain restrictions 
into their their web server there that says these old user user agents can't do it or this particular type of browser can't access this or whatever reason they have for putting in some kind of restriction what we're demonstrating here is that we can actually sort of broadcast the web server whatever we want it to be doesn't really matter my i use firefox and cali but over here i'm telling it that i'm actually doing a enumeration from a pixel pro i think it's pretty cool that's another cool feature that we can use in GoBuster. This next thing I'm going to show you is really cool. In some scenarios, when you have a server, you might be running domains on the exact same machine as other domains. So this technique that I'm about to show you actually uses a functionality of virtual hosts inside of GoBuster so we can enumerate to try and find all the different virtual hosts that are on our target machine. I'm doing a quick one on Google to look at their subdomains. So we're looking at GoBuster vhost u https google.ca, and they're going to use our subdomains list. There are so many different subdomain uh, word lists out there. Honestly, just Google it, and you'll you'll find one really really fast. Let's run this really fast and see what it comes back with. Got mail mobile another mobile support news image video wap store apps but you can see that at google.ca they're running a variety of virtual hosts sometimes in a bug bounty you've got all of the main work happening on one server one virtual server and that's where people they want people to go to however they've got sort of like a test environment that's also there on the same machine and so you end up going and be like Oh, well, why don't I skip looking at what they want me to look at and go look at what the thing is that they're trying to sort of hide or work on in the background that's not really supposed to be looked at. Another really useful thing that all bug bounty hunters do is subdomain enumeration. Now, there are a tremendous amount of tools and a variety of different techniques to do subdomain enumeration. However, we can use GoBuster to do that. That's the point of the video. We're using GoBuster here. I'm going to do a very similar thing that we just did, but we're going to find subdomains that in general. We're not trying to find virtual hosts on a specific machine. Let's go through it and bring up GoBuster. We're going to DNS, and the domain that we're looking for is google.ca, and we're going to throw out it a word list and see what it comes back with. Bingo Bango, we've got a ton of different domain subdomains for Google.ca. And we used GoBuster to do this. You could do this with any domain. That's that's the cool part. And it, GoBuster is such a, a easy tool to use. It's extremely useful. I use it all the time for bug bounty and CTF things. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a couple of the videos on the screen. I think you're going to enjoy. There's a shop that you can go and check out. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.